The views and opinions expressed on this show do not reflect that of the staff and management of WNOV and W293CX 106.5 FM Courier Communications Milwaukee, but are the sole comments of the host and guest of this particular show. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not reflect those of Wisconsin Voices. The views and opinions expressed by hosts and guests are their own, and their appearance on the program do not imply any endorsement or representation by Wisconsin Voices. Thank you for listening to Be a Voice with Wisconsin Voices. Be a voice. 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 Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices. I'm back. She's back. What's my, what's my gift? I'm going to tell y'all what happened to me. Could have brought me a loop dancer or something. <laughs> Dude, I didn't see any. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> they in their 60s. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What's wrong with us in our 50s and 60s? We can still drop them. Oh, 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 Rigging the AARP letters. The first round, of, you got to think, the first round of, of Luke dancers are in getting AARP. Yeah. Don't That's the first round. the first round. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all didn't watch the freak nip what video? That's why you right. <laughs> You got the Hulu uh, documentary coming up. Sex rape. That's why you're in politics. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in politics too now. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Um, last week I uh I went to uh Miami for a training, and I was so excited to be a part of this training because it is something that's gonna really help our our community in the uh, state of Wisconsin. And I get off the plane at. At noon, I go lay down for about an hour, brush my teeth, making sure my breath is fresh, did a COVID test, and bam, it came back positive. That was the first time I had COVID since this whole time, the whole time. And I was an essential worker and never got it. And I was stuck in a hotel up until Sunday when I came home. It was it was horrible. I hope everybody feel bad for me. Do I have a collective aw, poor baby? Man. Here we go. It hit me twice, 2021. And then, you know, back in November, y'all remember I told you that horrible Friendsgiving situation I went to. Oh, Ooh. well, they, in, a, in a, the, there was a couple things that I learned in this. I tried to call my doctor. And do you know, my doctor couldn't talk with me even though he was my doctor, he knows all my medication, my, my history, because he was not licensed in Florida. And he had to be licensed in Florida to give me any medical advice. That was the first thing that tripped me out. Um, but. I would have been like my insurance paid you in Wisconsin. Right. right but so, but I was, was my cell phone. Right. And, and my body. Right. Or help right now. But it, they, would, they would not allow. Uh, he couldn't give me any advice. And luckily, my insurance, they, I found an ins in network insurance company and I went to a uh, urgent care. Now, let me tell you about that urgent care. That urgent care was the bomb. I mean, I waited maybe five, 10 minutes. They did everything they need, had in my medical. So I think all those retirees down there has made that healthcare system pretty good <laughs> down there. Oh, Gave me medicine and, and did everything I needed to do and called me, followed up that day. And then I had to go back again. And they followed up the next day with, you know, asking me how was my, was I satisfied with their service? I was like, oh. okay, okay. So you're retiring to Florida then, right? But uh, No, not at all. <laughs> but I am glad that I am back. Um, I, I, I'm so glad the, the people that we have in our, our, uh, organization can hold it down when one of us is missing, all the rest of us can step in. So I love that about what we do. I'm so happy to see Keon though. Hey baby. His head shining. He look good. Yeah. That's funny. I always look good after some traumatic love experience. So why, <laughs> see, uh, right. Well, I, <laughs> 
Well, she always said, I'd be like, maybe that's telling me so. <laughs> that's not the one to be in. In, in, in the world. <laughs> wait, wait. In the world. Like, what you doing? Why you look so clean and happy? Like, in, the, know, in the words of uh, most of the people, what had happened? <laughs> what, why is, what was the love? Traumatic love experience. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we never had any of those. Oh. The new ones, the, the glow brings the energy that yeah. brings us closer. Oh, so you're glowing. No, okay. yeah, I'm glowing. I was glowing. You look good. You look like you got some rest. Uh, yeah. Didn't I just say traumatic? Yeah, no more fussing. Yeah. Uh, but no, Friday I had them. <laughs> say you didn't, didn't, I didn't say, didn't I say I ain't got to fuss no more with <laughs> I'm trying to steal love, but it's like, I'm good. If you don't want it. Um, no, I just had some business to take care of. Um, Which, um, I was no riddles. You got to keep up, baby. This is talking radio. Oh, okay. Mm, there you go. Sound like, sound like yeah. this. Sound like this. <laughs> we can't keep up. Cause maybe I need to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it was just business. Uh, a lot of things oh, been going on. A lot of positive your, things. That's your business. I was just. I know you said what happened Friday. That's oh. business. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you had a good story to tell. No, I wasn't going there. I was trying to get to the answer, answering his side questions at the same time. <laughs> there were no riddles. He kept jumping in. And we're trying to keep up on it. Be so, uh, voice, just, Wisconsin voice. A lot of business, a lot of uh, things going on. Got to uh, elevate myself into a new class of um, here judges. I, I've been leveled up. I'm, I'm I'm in a new space, so I had to take time off from here to go take care of some business. It was cool. Further well, later. Well, I'm glad we're all back. Um, I had a conversation earlier today with a gentleman, mm -hmm. um, and it it sparked. Uh, a uh, more relevant question. We are gonna. We have been. We'll have some more candidates coming on the next couple of weeks. They have uh, put their, you know, their when they could come in, and so we're trying to schedule everything. But before we, and the first candidates will be on tomorrow on the show. But I guess the question is, as we're we're going through this election cycle. What do you want to see in a candidate? What What are the things that you value? Because, you know, the candidates come in and they tell us what they want or what they need. And even as a candidate myself, I say what I wanted to do. But um, one of the things I always, when I first started running, I always go and knock on doors and I say, what's important to you and what do you want to see in an elected official? And when I get it, then if they have some unrealistic thing, I just say, you know, I ain't going to be doing that. <laughs> but I mean, so you'll have a clear understanding of who I am. But um, one of the things uh, this um, gentleman said that he wanted them to represent the people. What does that look like? What does that mean? Did we forget? No, because here's the thing. When you say you want them to represent their district, represent the people. All people are not going to agree on stuff. So how do you, you know, um, some people might think that, the, you know, the crime is the number one priority. Some people might think these, I don't care, I want the potholes fixed. Some people, you know, have all these different, you know, um, things that they will put as a priority. But how do you navigate that? How do you want them to navigate that? The most important first. But what is, or that's the, the most critical. But what is critical well, you, to you might not be critical to me. So people dying is not as bad as your, your tires get. Uh, honestly, honestly, maybe not. If well, so, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not saying on one way or the other. As long as they're on the list of working towards working on all of them, that's representation. Right. But some, I have heard so many people want their one thing done. Okay. So criminals vote too. So does that mean you don't work on crime because they want to continue to commit it? I, no. I'm, I'm not I'm not answering one way or the other. I'm just bringing these questions up because they do come up. Mm -hmm. They do come up where I didn't get my... Um, so I had a, a person in Milwaukee who called me and they, they just asked, how does the process work? Even though I wasn't their representative because they had a huge pothole in their alley. Well, with this, she knew about the potholes. She tried to avoid it, but ended up spraining her ankle. 
um, because of the pothole and it was so big and, you know, trying to go over it. And then there was another pothole right after that. So she ended up spraining her ankle. Trying to get out the first one. Yeah, just trying to avoid the first one. And and she had called her alder person numerous times just trying to get. Well, then I find out, I asked, uh, I made a phone call to one of the alder people that I know. And they said that the budget only allows, their budget only allows for a few alleys to be resurfaced per year. So that's, you know, how many alleys are in the city of Milwaukee? When I was real young, I read an article about this, about a Milwaukee article about the alleys. And it said in this article, I probably was in my early 20s, it said that some of these alleys in Milwaukee would not be fixed for the next 150 to 200 yep. years. Oh, yeah, there's still an alley. And this was like 2012, 2013, maybe even before that. There's still an alley between uh, 11th and 12th Street, which is, uh, between Concordia and Ring. That's still cobblestone. Yeah, I see. Yeah, the Old World <laughs> Third Street. Look, look, it looked like you down on the uh, Old World Third Street. <laughs> but that that's the point. It's like your street. Where do you where do you prioritize? You know, is alleys a priority? I think so. Like for for us in Glendale. And in it's in my district, especially in District One, most of the most of Glendale has either a driveway or um, some kind of uh, path. They don't have alleys, but most of my district does have alleys. So when they were talking about the importance of doing it, I had to fight hard because none of the other older people, except for maybe in the District Six in my area. She was the only one with um, alleys. And so they were like, well, why should we spend this? But they're still part of our community just because everybody else do- has a garage or they have, you know, a, a, a driveway. Our garages are connected to the alley. So even though it may not be something that is important to most of the city, because it was important to my district, I had to like fight tooth and nail to get that. And even go into a capital plan where I five years ago said, let's put this on the capital um, improvement plan. And then when it came up, they were like, well, we don't need to do that. And I was like, oh, yes, we're doing it. I did it exactly the way I was supposed to do it. I put it in the budget for five years. This is what is going to happen. So it depends on, I guess it depends on what you want to see in your elected officials. Right. Because if you could live in an area where where crime isn't as bad as it is living in certain parts of Milwaukee and you may more be concerned about keep presentation for your community versus you living in a deeper area or a low end, lower end or a more conflict ver- area in Milwaukee where you want to stop the cats from you know doing whatever because they've been getting away with it for you know seven to ten years and people just overlook them because they got a connection with somebody downtown and then they know somebody who got a a community business or something like that. So you maybe want to stop that. And then, you know, I'm in another area may just want to make the area look good and not, oh, we don't got that much crime. We got a couple burglaries, but we don't got that many shoes. So it just really depends on, like you said, your priority for that neighborhood. Yep. Because people, some people still look at it like this. When it comes to crime, we know what's going to happen. You know, you can't stop everybody. We know, you know, it's, you know, some people see it like, okay, we know crime, burglary, robbery is going to happen. So we might as well just go ahead and do our best to kind of make it look good or bring something to the community. I don't know. I feel like everybody has different, like you said, different feelings about what they want for their, for their individual neighborhood. It's- and also, um, elected officials are not miracle workers. <laughs> they, they are not. <laughs> they cannot just snap their fingers and make something happen. And especially in the city of Milwaukee, they have 15 people they have to get to vote on it to uh agree with them on certain things uh-huh. and everybody's vying for their own you know piece of the pie you have to work together to try to say hey you know let's work together we can get this done but it they're not miracle workers what do you guys think 414-444-5250 um we're gonna see uh i personally want an elected official for me if I'm voting for somebody who is going to stand up for my district or the community that I live in, um, they don't have to be perfect, but they also have to be able to get the job done. I want to see somebody doing something. I cannot. The one thing I hate is when they are sitting there and you don't hear from them and they are not bringing anything to the table. 
and they're just doing nothing. That's what my problem is. Is uh huh. That's the one thing I don't want in um Alderman. I kind of agree with everything you said. Is somebody that's not being responsive to the their communities, to the uh, needs of the people, their constituent. Mm -hmm. Don't even come in the community to even know what you know is going on um, on the blocks. Um, don't answer the phone. Not responsive. I want somebody that's going to. Uh, even if that's something they can't do or they need to get it voted on, at least explain that to uh, your uh, why constituents. They, why I couldn't get passed or stuff like yeah. that. So we, and then have community meetings. I don't see no ordering that I could think of in the city of Milwaukee. Um, but Malayla Combs, I think she has it once a um, month, the hour with the ordering. Um, but pretty. Uh, uh, Brett. Brett, she do? Okay, that's good. And then she's by um she's by Alderman. So I just need that information and her to spread the word to the community. Cause I live maybe yeah. on the same block, but not on the same block as her, but a couple of streets down. She's on like 17, 18. She got a couple up that <laughs> Okay. But there, I didn't get no information about it. And there may be other others too. Yeah. Others too, but that's the issue. Let's get that information out there. You yeah. make it convenient for the people that need to go. Don't put it at two o'clock in the middle of the day when most people work. Sometimes you're going to have to have a Saturday. You're going to have to have a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make it at eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday because people are tired. They worked all week. Why don't you have it at noon on a Saturday or after church on a Sunday? I always had those discussions with the electives, um, because you remember the Strauss issue? Yeah. The Strauss meat plant. Yes. And what people don't realize, you know, when they talked about Michelle, I was sitting right here when Michelle opened up an email three minutes before we went on air and was like, what is this? Oh, hell no. Because she lived down the way. It wasn't a plan. It, it didn't, people that we knew as she talked about it that day, were like, when that meeting happened, I got the daycare over here. People were calling in. And I had had a conversation with the brother uh, on that Monday, the day before it happened, about, Y'all don't utilize the stations and get information out like you should. Mm -hmm. You bring it out a day before or two days before, or you want to come on the man show on Friday and the event is Saturday. You know, you should be getting people prepared two weeks ahead of time or when you know it is so they can plan on being there, plan on taking off, you know. But they do a lot of social mm -hmm. media and, and internet use, and everybody's not on there. So while we were having that argument, a very uh, a very prominent uh, and uh, business owner was up to me. He looked on his phone and said, damn, Ken, I can get the radio station on my phone. I said, see, and he's driving the bins with the big house and all these businesses. He still don't know. So I think a lot of times they don't go to the old school methods of doing doors and mailers mm -hmm. or, you know, handing out stuff or, you know, they try to use social media. And how many of you really, how many of us really look at, we look at a lot of promotions on your social media and on commercials? We look we at, skip um, but the, it also depends on how your what is that algorithm algorithm is because right. if you don't look at that stuff it's not going to pop up right um so i guess it's about your likes and yeah well 414-444-5250 one more question before you go to the commercial so when is the election april 9th april 2nd the first the first so four weeks from tomorrow yes mm -hmm. so we are four weeks to pay attention and get her done and i think it's been slow because we had november off yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we lost traction and yeah, we really got to get folks back up. There's a lot of, a lot of folks running for office. Yep. We're at, uh, we'll talk about that when we get back on the other side of this. Catch Wisconsin Voices, Pia Voice Radio, every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. as we focus on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices, BA Voice Radio. Follow us at BAWI Voice and learn more at wisconsinvoices.org. Wisconsin Voices, three pillars, protecting democracy, teaching advocacy, building community. Good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so we do want to hear from the community on um, what they want to see in, in their aldermen and their elected officials in, in, in their entirety. So um, 
give us a call at um, 414-444-5250. We would love to hear um, what the community thinks about this. And also, Kia mentioning, um, mentioned um, voting was April the 2nd. Yes, that's, the, that's election day, but early vote starts March 19th. So get to you. Uh, so you definitely can get your voice in, um, heard much earlier. We got uh, quite a few um, seats that um, that you'll be voting for, and we'll start with the city of Milwaukee. Um, we have, and I am going to pronounce these names as as best as I can. Um, so now that the primary is over. There's uh, two people to uh, to vote for for mayor, either uh, Cavalier Johnson or David King. Those two are running for the mayor of Milwaukee. Then we have uh, city attorney, and there's uh, Tierman uh, Spencer and Evan Goki. There is a comptroller. And it's Gregory Grays and uh, Bill Christensen. There is nobody running against um, uh, Spencer Coggs for treasurer. So he is, uh, vote for him anyway, because it's only one person. <laughs> In um, Alderman District 1, there is no, um, um, Andrea Pratt is the only one on the ballot. She will be representing you for the next four years in District 1. District 2 is Mr. Mark Chambers, Jr., and he does not has, have an opponent as well. District 3, there is a race with Jonathan Brostoff and Aisha Griffin. So people in District 3, pay attention to who you would like to see represent you there. In District 4, there is um, Bob Bauman and Ray Nitty Boy Boynis. And I apologize for the, uh, for the uh, m mispronunciation of the name, if, if I did. Uh, District 5, which is... Bruce Winters in Lamont, Westmoreland. District 6, we have um, Malele Coggs and Brandon Patton. District 7, uh, we have DeAndre Jackson and Jessica Curra. Curry. We had both of them on the show. Uh, District 8, we have Ryan and T. Oh, I am so sorry. Antikaz, A N T C Z A K. And I'll get these names straight. I'm apologizing. And Jocasta Zambaripa. District 10, we have Richard Gleeden and Charlene Moore. District 11. Peter Burgessless and Josh Zepnik. And that is it for people who have uh, opponents. It's a lot of choices to be made. Did you say Ray Nitty? Ray Nitty is running. Really? Okay. What his name is, he has, he has a West Indian name. It's Ray. Ray Honio. Boys. Nitty Boy, okay. Boy Net. Oh, that's cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, he never was... used that song to uh get my my campaign going. I like uh, I want a wife. Do you know about Ray Nitty? This little bit. No, no, I I I'm not commenting on any uh particular candidate because <laughs> we just want them to come in. We right. just sent the uh, emails out to um have them come on the show whenever they want to if mm -hmm. they want to um and just talk about their candidacies um there's a lot to think about these are people that are going to represent you for the next four years at least 
Um, and uh, if you if you like your constituent or you like your 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 candidate, and then you should if you like your uh, alder person, you should support them. If you don't like them, then you have a, a a choice, but you have to pay attention, be aware of who's running. Um, I find that it it's it's interesting that people don't a lot of people, and this is just my observation, not everybody, but a lot of of people are concerned and have a lot of gripes and you know and want to talk about what's wrong up until it's time to vote and then they don't want to hear anything about voting. They don't want to go out there and, and, and actually listen to what the candidates have to say. But after April 2nd, when it's May and June and things aren't going the way they think they should go, then they will, they have a lot to say, but they haven't uh, participated in the process. I, uh, 414-444-5250 it's awfully quiet out there, and maybe what we're saying is is what people agree with. Maybe they disagree with us. Um, yeah, I like to hear it big time. Yeah, I really wanted to hear from the community or this issue, this topic, because it it and it you can assume, and you know what they say when you assume. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't say all that. I was just <laughs> saying people know what the the phrase is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only Latoya would go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we go have to. We go ask for Jesus in prayer. Yeah, it's amen. Amen. And, and it's like, can I have amen. one more? Amen. amen. <laughs> but um, that is that's kind of what we're we're going at. To um, we will be um, passing out flyers in the next couple of days all over, trying to put them out there so you'll know the information about early voting. You'll know who's on the ballot. For the at least in the Milwaukee County area. Um, let's see what our caller has to say. Caller, you are on the air. Good morning, good people. How y'all doing today? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Glad to hear. Glad to hear uh, from you. It was there was a comment made about uh, treasurer, and I'm a taxpayer. My taxes went up, and I cannot contact. Mr. Cox, so I'm probably, I'm going to write somebody in <laughs> uh, just because there's one person on the ballot uh, uh, for that seat. Um, we got to hold our elected officials accountable. Uh, I tried to speak to him at Juneteenth last year and I wasn't successful um, because he rode through the parade and left the uh, fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, but I would encourage people to reach out to his office, especially in things that matters related to tax assessments and in homes in our city. I know there's other variables taking place in why our taxes are going up, but we have to hold our elected officials accountable. Um, and just because there's no one running, um, I, I will still be uh, writing in a candidate for opposing. This. No, and that's and that's exactly you know what you're. This is the choices that you can make. The, the there, there's no candidate on. If you didn't like that candidate, you can write in. But this is the the part of democracy that that works. Mm -hmm. as long as you, yeah. and I like that you're holding them accountable. I just hired just both for because there wasn't nobody on. The, no, no, we can't just keep voting for people because nobody opposes them. We got it. We got it. But um, just to to like the definition of the city treasurer, and it's um, this is from the city of Milwaukee website. Um, the city treasurer is primarily responsible for the following: receiving and accounting for all monies paid to the city, making distributions that have been vouchered for payment by the city comptroller. Managing and investing city funds not needed to meet current expenditures. So I think you need to find out who you need to talk to about your assessment. Because that, that's, I mean, it's, uh, there's probably. Well, there's a lot of privileged spending being taking place in the city as well. So 
just because nobody's opposing them, I believe that we have to bring some accountability into our city government on this, um, especially with the state of inflation. And you're correct. If he's not responsible, I can't hold that to him. But uh, there's a lot of things that we're uh, being taxed for and uh, not just him in general, but there's a lot of things that we're being charged that we shouldn't be. And nobody speaks for the people. Our other people don't speak for us either. Thank y'all so much. Thank, thank you so much. Um, thank you. And that's where we have to keep trying to make sure that there is a some kind of communication between the communities that we serve and the the older people that are making the policies and the decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is, you know, this is not just aldermen. They're not just um, supervisors, county supervisors. These are the policymakers. Um, you know, we're going into the fall election as well, and that's going to be, I believe, all state reps as well as senators, depending. I don't know exactly how that's going to work because of the maps, um, but everybody could be up mm. all at once. And then with the new maps, this could um, change the dynamic of Madison. And remember, the the county is an arm of the state. So what happens with the state is affected by the county. You know, that yeah. that mm-hmm. state, whatever happens in the state will affect the county. Mm-hmm. Um, but do we all know that? Um, that's why we are doing a Wisconsin Voices Have a Civic 101 class. You can go on the website. Um, I had to cancel the last one, and I apologize. We're going to reschedule that one. But if you go on the website at wisconsinvoices.org, um, you know, scroll down a little bit and it, you'll see civics 101. And all you got to do is if you're interested, put your name and address in there and your email address. And we, when we schedule the next one, you will get an email, um, letting you know when that next time or date is. That is wisconsinvoices.org. There's a lot of, uh, changes that need to be made. But we're going to, you know, keep trying to do what we can. Caller? Caller, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Annette, and uh, I have a passion for uh, voting as well as registering people to vote. Uh, I can't really walk around anymore like I used to. And, um, you know, I said people, but when I did do that, registering people's vote. I would be like at the welfare office or outside of Walmart or, or just even by SBC when they were over there off of Capitol. And and I'd have my car. I'd be sitting right there by my car. And I'd be like, have you registered the vote? And registered, you know, just do all what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are saying, wow, I don't have to go downtown. I can, I can really register with you right now. And I did that. And, and I got like 300 people. It doesn't, it's not that hard. And then they, they would ask me questions. And I, and the reason why I had the answer for them is because if I don't know, how can I tell them? Mm-hmm. And, and, and what I do is I go by the three prongs. First of all, register, registrating, okay? Educating yourself and then participating, mm-hmm. you know? And the thing is that the last brother that called, sure, that's your right to write in a vote. But when you do that, you give it to Trump. This man, if we have our democracy taken away, and and I've never been as as examined as I am now, uh, it's going to look like Russia. Russia has no democracy. We don't, we lose our rights to almost to generally everything and it protection of our voting rights and things like that. It, it just baffles my mind that they don't even research them, ma'am. 
So I pray every day that when he beat this situation, God bless you for letting me talk, but it bothers me because I have grandchildren. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Well, and I understand um, there is, you know, remember, you can register to vote, myvote.wisconsin.gov. That is the only way to register unless you go to your city clerk's office um, or whatever city you live in. Uh, but we need to keep registering. You have to register yourself. We can't even, we used to, I know we, back in the day when you used to sit there and you said, you know, it used to, you were a, a certified uh, person that you could register. Yeah. But that is not the case in Wisconsin anymore. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And I, mm-hmm. you know what? I enjoy meeting people because I'm a big person. Uh, and use that feeling. And looking at the polls, and I work the polls as well. This is so important. I, I, voting to me, I take my grandkids out. They're like, what do we do now, Mom? I said, ask that person if we want to vote. This is so, take your kids. And, and, and just show them. How important it is. How important it is. Thank I you so much for so calling me. I can't, you know, you know, me. All right, now. All right, see you. Yeah, good name. But they ain't no much fan base. I didn't know you had that, that kind of thing. Oh, it's all over. You got another caller. Okay. Hello, caller. Good morning. Good morning. This is Mr. Holmes. Hi, Mr. Holmes. How you doing? Our conversation was shortened the last time. Um, I'm calling to help educate people to the point where in the last 50 years, we have not had a representative government. What I mean by that is we have put people in office who do not represent the people who put them there. And they have done a lot of things that the community doesn't know about because they don't communicate with the community. You had three good aldermen in the last 50 years who tried to do things outside of city hall and make sure the people who they represent know what they're doing and why. Three. Now I've run for office in this city both school board and aldermanic, but the point is the people that are sitting in those seats now basically only represent themselves. We've got to find people who care about the city of Milwaukee and the people who live in it who put them in office, and that's not happening right now. So I heard about a lot about what you said, and uh, you, you're doing a good job so far. But you need to expand that, as you said. You're going to have meetings and other seminars to do that. Thank you. Um, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Who was the three that you uh, feel uh, represented the community? Two of them were dead. The other one is uh, Alderman Cox. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's uh, three. That's <laughs> Two of them are dead, and and Alder Woman Kai. Caller, we have another caller. What about that? One narcissist alive. Yep. Okay. Now we were thinking. Like, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm yeah, because yeah. I really wanted to know the I'll call callers back and give us the other two. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holmes, we want to no. know. <laughs> uh, caller, you on the minute? Is this the meeting? This is Tamika. Hi, Tamika. This is Diane. It is who? Diane. Hello, Diane. How are you? I'm Bree. Um, you know, I was just thinking, you guys told me about the book and a half. Did it class? Yes, ma'am. And you know, a lot of times people don't know how they're voting or what the voting for done in this office, in their office. Um, the fit with me be a great chance. I mean, I don't know why we don't do it. Well, nothing is the best way to know. Uh, repeat know. that. 
Repeat that. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, I was just saying, the civic black get race with them. get people out. The uh, the civic class will get people out and 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 get them educated on what people are, uh, what they what what they do in office, what their uh, type, what their duties are. Yeah, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and they have it at a. You got radio. You can give fifteen minutes of the explanation of what goes on. However long walk on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, that's such a people. You see people. But I, I don't want to go back to you're not doing, you know, president, whatever it is. Right. Because it, it, it benefits me. Mm -hmm. to, and that's all I want. Everybody else, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that. I hear. I'm looking at a lot of this stuff. But even those more I'm not going to get ready, you know. And but uh, here in my state, I want somebody to get me if I can't recognize myself. And a lot of times, we don't want people to know what we do because we ain't doing it. You know? Very <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Miss Diane. I'm encouraging you to get it going because you it's not like you can really bring us some information that you we are trying um that is uh, one of the things but with wisconsin voices we really try to protect democracy build community teach advocacy look we have experts that come in and help um train we as a staff you know learn and grow from the community as well we are not by any means the end all and know everything we just we learn as as we learn, we inform you. Um, there are experts out there and there are people who are really just um, have blessed us to give us information. So we're, we're trying to get the most accurate information out there um, to uh, choose who the community wants to serve them. And, and that is the biggest um, hurdle is making sure that you know all your options. Um, it's 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 a uh, it's a hard um, it's hard out here because we people are s sometimes so disheartened on what's going on, but I don't want them to give up. Um, I don't want them to give up on uh, who who represents them or 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 give up on our city or our our, our, our state because. We got some great people that are running. We got some people who really want to do some good stuff. So um, I think it's just educating them on who they are. This is WNLV 860 AM 106.5. You are listening to Be, the, Be a Voice, Wisconsin Voices podcast. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices Be A Voice Radio. Follow us at B A W I Voice and learn more at WisconsinVoices.org. The three pillars of Wisconsin Voices are protecting democracy, teaching advocacy, and building community. Learn more about Wisconsin Voices and our partners at wisconsinvoices.org. Stay up to date on our community events page and get involved by visiting our donation page. I'm going to ask everyone. We go. We going to have, um, we need to have some prayers going over here <laughs> to whoever you pray to. Because. Uh, Latoya has a, she has some, some things on her mind. Latoya, we're going to let you go ahead and this is her, we got, you know, 10 minutes. We're going to let you, she yes. has a gripe today. I have a gripe today with seeing all these handsome, lovely young men out here sagging with the crack of their booties out. I'm going to say it nicely, with the crack of their booties out. Sometimes they um underwear with dirty looking uh, you know 
we got to do better. Because <laughs> as Keon made a great statement, crack kills. So, uh, <laughs> well, I think that's our, um, our PSA for today. Yes. <laughs> uh, but this is from LaToya. From LaToya. <laughs> Jay, yeah. <laughs> the opinions of our guests, <laughs> the opinions of our staff are their own opinions. It does not represent it was positive voice. <laughs> but uh, for real, so uh, anybody else uh, um, got something to say about that? Please give us. We a just call. had a. <laughs> Don't matter. Eight to eight. We're going yeah. eight to sixty-two. People. Um, the ones that still want to be, you know, 22 and they 62. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's right. They still want to hang out. They still want to hang out in the uh, uh, 19 to 25 year old crowd. And, or it could uh, be someone like myself who has no hips. And no matter if I wear a belt or not, he still box, said, box, 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 I won't do that. <laughs> that's one thing my dad had. He had his spin. He passed away in 2012 when he had them suspenders to 2012. He gonna make sure his pants was up. He ain't like no belt, but he sure had his suspenders because he wasn't gonna show you the crack of his boots. Mm -hmm. I do have a question for Keon, though. Uh, Keon, let's talk about uh, your uh, Wednesday venture um, with the community. I, I love the fact that you are still out there trying to feed the community, uh, the people that are in the Atkinson area and are in the surrounding area. Did you get to listen to any of the show when you were gone? No, I was there. Oh, they brought Brandon in, and we actually get history of that. Oh, I... And, you know, it's it's even bigger than the pantry. The pantry right. was just what we held on to when things got rough, COVID. But that that the whole point in, in, in the Atkinson Park venture, um, programming which we're to trying to get back to this year we're going to get back to there's no try about it we're already planning and working with the parks foundation and uh getting ready to get stuff well on uh, the ball rolling with the milwaukee uh, county parks but it all started with mediation and generational uh you know uh, the hatfield and mccoy situation that had been going on for over 30 years so it really is bringing village together and you know henceforth uh getting folks from the neighborhood to come together and serve themselves i'm just a uh, the conduit for the organizations and whatnot. But you are part of that community. You yes, live yes, right yes, smack yes, in yes. the middle of it. Yes, yes. And, and, and you and, give and, right and, back to yeah, that and, and that's my choice. Uh, I love my city. I mean, I grew up in several neighborhoods. This is just the one I was born in. And I grew up here, but I ran through here. But I grew up, I'm a, I'm a child of Milwaukee. Yeah, you know, I got oh, neighborhoods. I got neighborhoods. My mother's been uh, on the Hampton area since 1990. I've been on, on 41st and North since 79. I was born here in 77. So, but yeah, um, that that Saturday venture is um, it's growing. It's we've got to kind of better organize that, but it's going to come with volunteerism that comes with the park program. Because the first two years, the years prior to COVID, it just took off. It was real big, um, and that's what we want to get back to the activities and programming the park during the summer hours, weekdays, while the children are out of school. We already have the uh, uh, the okay. I spoke to uh, Viola Rembert over at a hard love place. They'll be supplying us with the uh, summer meals program, the breakfast and the lunch, 8 a.m. and 12, and possibly dinners. We'll, we'll see how, what the volunteerism looks like. Right. Um, and then with that, you know, there's the basketball camp, and that supports the camp. And by having that, it brings the other activities. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started our first two years, we had reading and tutoring. We actually had a building down the street, but I think we'll be able to, um, with a little fundraising, uh, I'm about to get into that mode with a couple of organizations I deal with. Uh, get uh, breaking the ass, the, the, the fear to ask or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, I used to grow up, you know, get the money, make it happen. But in this game, it takes a lot more than what you can really bring. So um, I think we can get tents and other tables and stuff out there, but we're going to turn this stuff out this year. And what, if you want to volunteer, um, what's your email address to? Well, currently, uh, we, uh, well, the village group, MKE at Gmail dot com the village group mke at gmail dot com I have been working on the website for quite a while uh, we're gonna tighten that up so we can make it even easier um then it'll be a click of a button yeah or you click, give, or you you know, you know, if everything donations and all say that again the village group mke 
at gmail.com. You can give me a call directly right now. Uh, I had a village group phone for years, <laughs> but, you know, consolidated down to my, my personal uh, 414-581-9238. Once again, it's 414-581-9238. Uh, I don't know if you should have did that. I've been doing that for years. I know, but Eric, you know, Eric, Eric Brown warned me about got, that. Yeah, but you got a oh, yeah, got I, following. I, I get it all. <laughs> so I do have to create a new phone. I even got to create a new Facebook page for my family. And I miss out on deaths. You know, people close to me, the community uses my social media so much. That I don't use it as much as the community does. <laughs> I mean, yeah, government offices, they share everything. With my so therefore... What's wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with the algorithm. Oh. So I don't see family function. Oh. So when I started, it was just family. It blew up. So now I have to start a new page for my personal work. It's like I got to get another phone number. Personal work. You gonna get that out too, like that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. this number's been eleven years running, so yeah, this is a business. So definitely call four one four five eight one nine two three eight. Then there'll be picnics, barbecues, and anybody that wants to bring an activity to the park. This is a model area, mm-hmm. so this year, like when we started, COVID just kind of shut us down hard, you know. But I don't do target areas. We do model areas, and you know, we try to. My model point is to model activities and and a certain. Uh, facilitation of things and take it around the other pocket parks in the community. Not necessarily the big ones, mm-hmm. but the pocket parks that need it, the garden home um, and, and other little parks. What is um, Johnson Park now called? Uh, the one on Fond du Lac? I don't know what they changed the name to. Changed the name? Yeah, but that's the one we are. Lindberg is burying park around the sea mm-hmm. of yeah. That's where we have in our community cookout this year. And that's a picnic park though, isn't it? They have picnic tables. And they have tables things. and they have, and they have uh, a pavilion with you know a nice space for kids but we decided we you know we take our community uh cookout we first originally did it at uh what is that uh mcgovern park Over. and then uh we moved it last year to sherman park but we want to go back um we're doing it at johnson park and i know it's a different name of johnson park but we all know it is john no and they renamed one of the parks. They the, across from but the, like the village group focus is pocket park. Right. These parks and neighborhoods that don't and, and, they, and they, they seem to be a disenfranchised neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. They're not picnic parks. Um, like I said, garden homes. Uh I don't know if a stock park was a city park or a county park, but you got little county pocket parks around here. Yeah, like the one off mm-hmm. off of fifteenth Columbus or whatever. Columbia. Now that's a city park. Columbia because it's but it's not a it's not a picnic park, as you would say. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about like county parks. Atkinson okay. is a county park. The Garden Homes is a county park. Okay. Uh, city parks usually have the Milwaukee Red because they have it somewhere in the mm-hmm. really tied to them. So they have the basketball well, not courts. Not in the Columbia has been remodeled, and they have, yeah, it is a wreck. They got a whole they new have building. area for the wreck? Yeah. I know they have the basketballs. But no, no, they redid that whole park. Oh, wow. Oh, they got oh, lights wow. on at night. They got concrete oh, wow. benches. It's okay. beautiful. <laughs> I was like, whoa, girl, this is what they need to do. They have a neighborhood association that, that you know, fought for that. Got together with Frank. We did it. Just like Garden, um, what is this park down here? Uh, Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, they got a whole new tennis course, a whole new uh, playground, a whole new basketball courts. They just restructured everything. They actually dug up the ground and redid it. So they're sort of, uh, uh, what's the other one over by North Division? Um, Oh, they I seen that one. Yeah. Like next to the like post office. That. Yeah, that's nice. I can't think of the name of Franklin High. Franklin High. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They redid that. But, yeah. Well, um, so we're gonna do what we can to make sure that people get information. We're starting again. We will have some uh candidates on tomorrow. Um uh, oh. 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 I'm talking about the history of what we're gonna do. Wednesdays at Atkinson Park. What we say, twelve thirty. Mm-hmm. The loads have been getting larger, so we leave the station. We go get the loads. We set them up and we give it out. So twelve fifteen, pretty much line up time. Even though folks are pulling up in their cars at eleven fifteen to be first in line. Yeah, they, they sat there in the cold with bags to be first in line. But mm-hmm. our giveaway, our pantry giveaway, is every Wednesday, uh, twelve fifteen or so until it's gone. On tenth and next. Yeah, uh, nine thirty six West Atkinson Avenue. Thank you uh, for uh, listening to Be A Voice, Wisconsin Voices, Be A Voice.
views and opinions expressed on this show do not reflect that of the staff and management of WNOV and W293CX 106.5 FM Courier Communications Milwaukee, but are the sole comments of the host and guest of this particular show. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not reflect those of Wisconsin Voices. The views and opinions expressed by hosts and guests are their own, and their appearance on the program do not imply any endorsement or representation by Wisconsin Voices. Thank you for listening to Be a Voice with Wisconsin Voice. Be a 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 voice. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices.